This film, actually, somebody from the National Science Foundation sent me this story about eight years ago. This movie first came out in 2014, and I remember thinking, what an extraordinary story. You've got four undocumented boys, 16, 17 years old, right, that built an underwater robot from duct tape and sticks, basically, and uh, defeated MIT. And I thought, what a great sort of Rocky-esque movie. And um, I called the teachers in the film, and I said, I would love to do this documentary. And they said, well, so would Warner Brothers. And Warner Brothers acquired the rights to the movie, um, actually just as I was calling. So a few expletives later, um, I called again the next year, because you know in Hollywood, somebody will option something, and most things don't get made, um, as Bill will tell you. Um, and uh, so I called the next year, and they said, nope, Warner Brothers rolled over their rights. They gave us another whatever. Uh, called the next year, called the next year, called the next year. And in the meanwhile, they were sort of tracking the work that I was doing, and we had some great success with um, uh, one of our films around underrepresented kids that were competing in a business plan competition. And the next year I called, they said, Mary, you know, Warner Brothers rolled it over, but we really love what you're doing, and we think you're the person to make the documentary. But um, when Warner Brothers calls us, we'll ask them if they'll give you the rights, right? It was adorable. And I thought, okay, good luck with that. But um, what really happened was wa the rights came up again in 2013, and Warner Brothers inexplicably let the rights lapse. So I was ready, right? I pounced, um, got these guys to agree that I could have the right to make this documentary. And literally 30 days later, I'm hustling. I'm like hustling to find funding. I get this call uh, that Lionsgate was interested in the movie and who the hell was I? <laughs> and but for that 30-day window, this movie never would have been made because no major studio would have ever allowed um, anybody to dilute the rights or, or for this to happen. And it was really an extraordinary. We raced to stay ahead of what became a feature film called Spare Parts starring George Lopez. Um, and um, I got to meet Lorenzo and the story evolved into something much more complex than just a Rocky movie. And when many of these students, and Lorenzo was also really active in um, voicing concerns about dr dreamers and undocumented students, and I, I hadn't fully appreciated that aspect of the story. And this really turned into, I remember when we were talking with distributors, they were like, ooh, you know, you're getting a little political with this. You know, ooh, that undocumented thing where the kids, ooh. And I remember thinking, um, if I don't include that part of the film, I'm robbing that voice. And who am I to even consider doing that? And so ultimately we struck a really innovative partnership with NBC. The film actually aired, the first time in NBC's history, they ever aired something both in Spanish and English um, at the same time. So Telemundo uh, was in Spanish, we gave them a very, we let them show a short version of the film, a 45 minute version, um, and it was on MSNBC and Mundos at this, all at the same time, and it was really, uh, really sort of an extraordinary run we had. Um, so I think I'll start with there. And then of course, meeting Lorenzo, I mean, what is not to love, right? He was, he kept us in stitches, and um, Lorenzo calls me up and he's like, well, you're gonna make this movie about us? Well, we're catering for the crew. And uh, you're going to pay us to cater the crew. And I said, whatever it takes. And uh, so he said, okay, we're going to have spicy beans and fish tacos. And, and now I can't eat anything spicy. And um, so you and Luis, do you remember? You made me like this, this, it was a delicious dish. And I was like the only spice, I was the spice free girl is really what I was. So. Lorenzo, <laughs> what was your experience of all of this? Uh, so, what, like what experience cooking for the set? <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, uh, we just wanted to share the story. We, we really wanted to uh, make sure that 
everything that was needed to be told in, in a documentary in a film was said and to keep the immigration issue uh, afloat because a lot of the uh, people that we talked about uh, to do this movie, they wanted to change it. They wanted to make it like a super bad movie uh, with comedy and all that, which it does have comedy, but it also is very serious about the topic. And our story is just one of many thousand stories out there. So we never, even the teachers wanted to make sure that the story stayed as true as possible. We actually got to meet Mary and she kept pushing to get it done. And uh, it was the, one of the best decisions that we've, we've, we've ever made in, in film history, so. Film history, people, did you yeah, hear that? Film history. <laughs> in film I, history for us, anyways. And, <laughs> and you know, for me, it's, um, uh, we're just the vessel, right? We're telling, we're getting out of the, really getting out of the way of the story, right? And this was Lorenzo and these other young men doing really extraordinary things. And um, we were talking about this during dinner, that one of the most meaningful events that we did with this film, Lorenzo was with me, uh, we were invited to a screening in California, and they said, yeah, um, I think Microsoft was hosting something. We're going to have 1,000 middle schoolers. And I thought, oh, okay, this is, it's on, right? So we go out, and they're, they got the text, and they're pulling each other's hair, and it's a pandemonium. And they're like, the director's here, and they're like, whip de effing do. Like, these are, you know, they're not adults. They don't, you know, clap politely. And, um... The scene, co and I've got sweat stains. You were calm as a cucumber, but I had sweat stains, you know, under here. And um, because this is an unfiltered, raw audience, and we're about to make them sit through 90 minutes of a documentary, right? 11, 12 years old. The first AMC's logo comes up, and there's cheering. And the, remember, do you remember that? The kids cheered throughout the whole movie, well, except the serious parts, and you could hear a pin drop. And afterwards, during the Q&A, little girl raises her hand, she's about 11, 12 years old, and she said, you know, I'm, um, I'm Hispanic, and because of my culture, I never thought I would amount to anything. And she paused and she said, and I just wanna let you people know, I'm going to now go to something big. And you people. I'll never forget that, you people. And I remember looking at you and Luis and um, just, I almost burst into tears because here was somebody that was talking about how Lorenzo had inspired her to think beyond what she thought might be limitations imposed on her by us. You know, us meaning society. And so to be able to have a medium where a young person uh, thinks differently about their destiny, I mean, there's no better thing. And then meeting the president. That was cool. Can you, can you tell us about meeting, the, meeting, going to the White House? You've been to the White House twice, Lorenzo. You've been to the White House three times, Mary. No, seven. Seven times. <laughs> but who's counting? <laughs> if, if, if you can tell us what that, for those of us who have not been invited to the White House, if you could tell us what that's like. You know what, it's, um, how did you feel? You, you talk first. Well, I've never been invited to the White House or been in the White House. So being undocumented, it's different experience because we actually had to have escorts uh, with us at all times, even going to the restroom. Uh, and that's not a lie. They're like following us everywhere. And they just made I didn't sure. Know, I didn't know that part. Yeah, we had to ask for permission to but go. But did you at least take the paper towels in the bathroom that had the presidential seal? No. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so it was like a unique experience. We got to, you know, talk to some uh, stars that were also there because of uh, the stuff that we were doing, you know, talking about how to bridge the gap in education and uh, just create a better uh, society for uh, Latino minorities in the country. So it was really cool. We got a, a round table, and uh, so it was, it was interesting to, to talk to these people that you can influence and have a voice at a national level, and that was an amazing experience within itself. So the only thing that threw me off was those experts. It was just, yes. <laughs> what, what, what did I do to you? <laughs> or, you know, what, I'm not gonna do anything at the White House. It was an honor, you know, so it was just different. That stood out to me.